All right, guys, we're talking rivets today, and this is one of those cases where too many options have left us vapor locked. We got differing lengths, differing cap sizes, different designs, and it just throws everybody off. So let's try and simplify this a little bit. Look, I'm a full red-blooded American, so I believe very strongly in the standard measurement system, but I'm going to go by millimeters. I mean, that's what, it's just easier to do the math and 15 sixteenths of the world population uses it anyway. <laughs> you see what I did there? And speaking of international relations, feel free to order from the Chinese if you want to, but I would recommend that you don't. There are a lot of companies in the U.S. that put out products. We got Springfield Leather. That's where I get most of my rivets. Um, Tandy does have imports, but at least they're consistent in their quality and across the board, so worth having. And uh, uh, Buckle Guy put out a great chart that then they have excellent products, but they, they're they a little more expensive. So that gives you an impression. They recommend having your rivet come up two to three millimeters above your, your leather to get the cap on. I don't find that to be true. In the, in the next scene here, I'm going to demonstrate using four to five ounce leather. And you can see in my first hole, I've got uh, a small rivet. And we're already starting to rack up, you know, like three, four layers. And as long as it's, you can still see the silver above the leather, you have enough because that cap protrudes out a little bit and sticks down into the, it recesses into the leather. All right, so there's six layers of four ounce there. And we still have enough to get a cap on it. Except for my butterfingers. It doesn't matter what size you use necessarily, whatever looks good. But also keep in mind, if if you can get the best variety of post lengths in an 8 or a 9 millimeter uh, cap, definitely do that. As far as setting goes, they make a special convex tool that you can use to... It'll... If you beat it on a flat anvil, then you wind up with one flat side and you wind up with one rounded side on the top if that's what your aesthetic you're going for, but I don't care. I beat mine with a nylon hammer on an anvil so I get two flat sides and that seems to work very well for me. The rivets hold, they don't pop out and, and aesthetically it, you see a bright shiny, that's all you care about. It's just a dot. Using a longer length than you need is the risk. Because this was appropriate for a medium, not for a large. And as a result, when I beat on the thing, the top side slid over to the left and offset from the bottom. So it creates a cattywampus situation, and you kind of want to avoid that at all costs. So guys, I hope you found this helpful at all. Um, if, if you have any comments for me, if you have any questions, if you have a success, uh, an idea for another video, please let me know. This, this one came from uh, Ashley. Thank you very much for for the question and uh, I'll uh, see you in the next one